Good evening, my friends, and welcome to our midweek devotion for Wednesday, the 20th of March. I almost said February because my brain is all kind of different jumbled, but we're almost, we're, we're kind of grinding our way towards the end of March, which means we're almost into April, which means it's, like I tell people sometimes, it's almost time to get your Christmas decorations out again. It's a very busy beginning to 2024, and I hope that it's been treating you well and that you find yourself all the time with new opportunities to love on people and to provide help and support all around you. I, I want to share something with you today that's necessary for me that has been in this little program I use for weeks. I just didn't realize or know that by today I would need to be reminded of this very much myself. So even if I were talking to myself tonight or any time that somebody comes across this, I guess I'm not talking to myself if you came across it, uh, I need to be reminded of this. But before I get into any of that, I want to share some some announcements with you, all of them Easter related, because this is a year for kind of early Easter. It's it's a week and a half away. Easter is almost upon us. It's the last Sunday in March, and so that means we have a, a number of Easter festivities that, that we get to participate in every year, and I want to make sure you know about them in case you get the opportunity to be a part of them. And so what I'm going to do is give them to you in order as they happen. So one thing happens on Saturday, one thing happens on Sunday, and then another thing happens one week later on Sunday. But first, for our littles and for our kids, I hope by the time you see this, all of you have gotten a reminder text. This is one of those that we try to get an RSVP on because we try to have, well, we definitely want to make sure we have enough of the craft and the and the food that we have uh, to, to enjoy and celebrate with. And so Excuse me, our Littles Easter party is this coming Saturday, March 23rd. It's going to start at 10 a.m. in the gym where, it all, where we always try to kick things off. So I hope all of you who have Littles can, can be here and can stay. You're certainly invited to stay, parents. If you can't stay, at least let me have the little one. That's what I say. <laughs> but if you can stay, I certainly want you to. A great craft and resurrection eggs and an egg hunt time for them. And it's just going to be a great a great uh, Saturday morning. And then, then by the afternoon, it's time to go home. And, and maybe that's a great opportunity to have a nap. I don't know. But, but either way, I hope you'll be able to be a part of that if you can. And then also the very next day, we're going to have our outreach Easter egg hunt where we very famously have Don't Let It Fool You, where it says supper. Uh, I can guarantee you that's always going to be the same kind of supper. At least once a year, this is the hot dog event. Uh, God used those hot dogs to direct us towards somebody that, that, that we were able to help years ago. And so I just I like to remember that by making sure we keep on having the hot dogs. So our outreach event from 4 to 5.30 on the 24th, so that's the very next day. That's this coming Sunday. We'll have a devotion time, an Easter egg hunt time for all of them, and we'll separate that by age, I think, just to give some folks a fair shot. Uh, and, then, and then we'll be able to have uh, hot dogs and cupcakes, a great time to love on our community, love on one another. So I want you to be a part of that, if at all you can. And then, of course, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> I need to click this button. We have Easter Sunday, and our Easter Sunday schedule is 8 a.m. worship together in the sanctuary, and then after our worship at 9 a.m., the men of the church will have breakfast provided, and so we'll, have, we'll be able to have Easter breakfast together. You don't have to worry about making a large breakfast if you don't want to. If that's a tradition, I hope you keep it. But if not, I would just invite you to be here on Easter Sunday, the 31st of March, 8 a.m. for our worship, where we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. We celebrate the goodness that comes from the faith we have to put into him and to receive that grace and mercy. And then our 9 a.m. breakfast where we can feel that grace and mercy through the gift of good food and good fellowship and just being together. I hope you can be a part of all of those if you have the chance. If you've, if you've got little ones, bring them to our Easter party on Saturday. If you've got any ones, including you, uh, I don't care who you are, how old you are, how young you are, if you can come to our outreach time to love on our community and one another, I encourage you to do that. That's this Sunday and the next Sunday, Easter Sunday, and, and the great chance we have to be together then. 8 o'clock is, for most folks, in the I've, I've learned 8 o'clock is as close to sunrise as, as, most, as most of us want to get. <laughs> and because it's Mississippi, you never know what sunrise weather will be like, especially in March. So uh, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, worshiping together, and then being able to, to, to enjoy, enjoy one another at breakfast. And then last... Uh, I want to ask you, as you come across this video, that you share prayers for my family uh, and for my dad. Papa is suffering from some health problems, and they've gotten kind of difficult quickly. Um, kind of 
seemed like it was peaking in in trouble right at, at Tanner's wedding at Tanner and Maddie's wedding Papa looked real good that day I mean that that suit was looking good if you haven't seen a photograph of dad in a, and my dad in a suit trust me that's first off that's mega rare but he he made it look right uh, but we've had we've struggled since then we've had some health problems since then and and really right now what I what I want God to do of course to provide healing but just give us a name show us what it is that 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 the problem is and tell us how to deal with it how to find healing in it or or whatever it is what what, what do we need to do what is all of this um, to a lot of people Papa is the most important guy on the planet and so we want to want to take care of of what is so important as so many of you know well because it's it's fortunately the same for you and your family so and it's that situation that I didn't know when I was setting this up a couple of weeks ago so that I wouldn't have to set it up today. Uh, I had already decided, I already had written down, scribbled down a thought and, and had a Bible verse there to, to reference it, but it, it, it was I pushed the button wrong, so it's that. Uh, and I'm in front of the Bible verse. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 7, and a very famous verse where Paul says, we walk by faith and not by sight. In context of chapter 5, though, Paul is talking about this difficult pull between life and death. That, that in life, there's a kind of groaning, a longing for the freedom that eternity brings us. And I will always recognize that even as people of faith, even giants of faith, struggle with the pain associated with death in all of its forms. Uh, when you lose a pet or when you lose a parent, certainly the feelings are different. And many of you who have gone through both of those processes understand that. Um, but any sort of perception of loss brings a kind of pain because there's a, a separation there that our, our insides know it shouldn't be this way. And, 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 and that is the context that Paul is talking about life and death, the difference between being clothed in eternity and not wanting to be naked in this life but he doesn't then connect that to say that this life is pointless but i recognize that this is also this it almost seems random when he says this and and i'll share with you in verse 5 of chapter 5 he says now the one who prepared us for this very purpose the purpose of of living a life of faith and then joining him in eternity the one who prepared us for this very purpose is god and he gave us the spirit as a down payment. I know that this process of death to life is going to take place. Therefore, we are always full of courage, verse 6 says. And we know that as long as we are alive here on earth, we are absent from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. So then, he goes on, whether we are alive or away, we make it our ambition to please him. In other words, we know that if I'm not with God right now, then this isn't all there is. And I know that because I walk by faith and not by sight. But that's applicable also in every place that we're struggling to understand something. Because it doesn't have to be death where you need a reminder that we were called to trust God, not try to figure it out by, based on what we see or what we understand. And that's a headache that we all, that we all suffer from. We're always trying to figure it out. We're always trying to give an answer. We're always trying to understand on some clear, trustworthy level what's happening, why it's happening, and how it's going to work out. And so if I was able to tell you whatever trouble you're having today, whatever problem you're struggling with today, in exactly eight days it's going to come to an end, then you no longer have to have faith inside of that process. Now, now that, that requires that I have the knowledge of this. Okay, so... Let's assume that I know for a fact that your issue will come to an end in eight days. Well, then you don't, if I share that with you and you know I'm the one who knows, then you no longer have faith. You have knowledge. You have sight. You see how it's going to work out. Paul says that's not how we're called to live. We're not called to live knowing. We're not supposed to know everything. Instead, we're called to live by faith. And faith is trusting in the one who does know everything. 
And it's God, God's purpose and plan isn't to reveal all of it to us. In fact, he says you can't understand it all. You can't comprehend. My thoughts are beyond you. They're higher than the way that you can think. So what we're asked is to trust and to have courage inside of that trust that the faith we place in God is a well-founded faith. It's in the right position. Now, you and I express faith every day. I'm sitting in a chair right now, and I had faith that it would hold me when I sat down. So much faith in this chair that I didn't even ponder, I didn't stop to think whether it would succeed in its job. Now, do chairs break? Of course, chairs break all the time. There's some, there's some pretty funny videos <laughs> on the internet of people sitting in chairs and they break. And they always seem extremely shocked that the chair broke. Why? Because every other time they sat in the chair, it, 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 it did fine. It worked fine. But chairs fail. People fail. Situations will fail us. God doesn't. He is the only truly trustworthy thing in your whole life. And yet, I don't mean this to be hammered on anybody. I need to be reminded. By the exercise of faith, I put, e I put my faith in the chair easier than I put my faith fully in God when something difficult is happening. Right? I didn't even think to question the chair. I just sat down and it's going to hold me up because that's what chairs do. Well, God says he's going to hold me up spiritually, physically, for eternity. But when a thing gets difficult, when a thing gets challenging, suddenly I find a question arises. I need to know a little more. I need you to show me a little more. I need some clarity. I need, though you say trust you, I'm going to need something more than that. It's not right. And it's why Paul says we are full of courage when we surrender to this. I, it takes courage to trust God because sometimes, though a million times it works out, you're afraid it won't a million and one. And so we have courage. And whether we're with him or, or, or with us, our faith is in him and so then our desire is to do what pleases him. We make it our ambition to please him. So I don't know what you're dealing with. I know what I'm dealing with lately. I know a little about what we're going through at home, but I don't know what you're going through. I, I want to know a lot about a lot. I don't know very much sometimes about much. <laughs> But I do know that the Bible says it isn't for you or I to figure it out. And we struggle with that fact. We think if just I knew more, I could figure this out. I could change that over here. I could fix that over there. That's not for us. We live by faith, not by sight. And faith is hope in the thing that I can't see. But it's not hope like I wish it would work out. It's hope knowing that the working out is on its way. It's a, it's a working out, that, tr that train of God's going to work it out. It left its station long ago, and try as I might, I couldn't do anything to stop it. So here it comes. My faith is knowing that it's coming, even if I can't hear the whistle blowing or I can't see the train at all. We live that way, and we need to draw courage in that and encourage one another. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to understand, and it's okay to say so. So in fact, for the first time, my wife asked me today, are you okay? I said, yes. And I paused a second and said, no. That's okay. It is okay to not be okay. What I can lean on is I know the one who knows exactly what's going on, and he will work it out. So I pray that whatever it is that you might be dealing with today, if you're in the same kind of boat, I don't know how this works out. I don't know what's going to happen. Remember that through Christ, we have been given the freedom and the gift to walk by faith, not trusting what we can know or what we think or how we plan, but trusting the one who holds the whole universe in his hand and is desperately, desperately in love with you. Let me pray for you before we come to a close. Father, thank you for this evening, this technology that you give that allows me to be with friends near and far and the chance that we have to pause for a moment 
I hope and let you make some sense of what might be senseless, but to be reminded that we have been called to trust you far above and beyond what we can see and comprehend. That we be reminded it isn't our job to figure it all out, to comprehend it all at once, but to put our faith in the maker of the universe who died that we might live, who set forth the path of redemption for all mankind and who loves us more than we've ever been loved before. You deserve more trust than a chair. And we apologize. We ask you to forgive us for when we fail to find that full faith in times of difficulty. Pour it out over us. Pour that faith on us, that that ability to trust. Pour it out all over us. That we can smile at everything that comes and know you know exactly what you're doing. We ask for your guidance in all things and for peace, the promised peace that passes all understanding. You make all things new. Everything is whole when it's in your hands. I pray you would give us everything we need that a growing desire in our hearts might be to please you and nothing more. And I ask you to do all of that in the holy and blessed name of Jesus, my Savior. Amen. All right, everybody, I hope you have a really good rest of your evening. Or when you come across this, I hope that the day you find it is one of the best days you've had in a long time or if ever. And that you remember that I come to a close in this video, but you don't come to a close. And what you do now is go out into the world around you, refreshed and renewed, in the faith that God has poured into you, and then you, in turn, pour out kindness all over everyone around you, all because of the kindness Jesus has poured out on you. I love you. Thank you so much for being who you are, being a part of this time with me. I hope God blesses you beyond anything you've ever heard, anything you've ever thought, or anything you've ever dreamed, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Good night.